So on Twitter, uh, Rin's Reviews, our friend, uh, who's done a couple episodes with us, he did the Kingsman and, uh, why can't I remember the other episodes people have done? He's done two episodes. Uh, Death Wish. So he did Death Wish and Kingsman, Golden Circle with me. He wanted to let us know that he really likes this movie and that Twitter or that the people who listen to the podcast should know that. Uh, he told us that, uh, room. He told us over on Twitter. So if you have anything, I generally try to tweet out whatever movies are coming up. If there's anything you would like to share or tell us about whatever, you can go over to Twitter and share with us over there and we will shout it out on the podcast. He also had a lot of things to say about Jeremy Johns. Do you know who Jeremy Johns is? He is a YouTube personality who reviews movies. And uh there weren't like super nice things about Jeremy Johns, so I'll probably just leave it at that. But uh uh, Rin's Reviews says he enjoys these movies. So if you got a chance, go check him out over on YouTube, Rin's Reviews. He reviews movies, video games, different things like that. Uh, his Kingsman review is really well done. It's like really in depth. It's doing good. It's really well. Um, but yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They make- Room. Not room. the room, but no, room. Not the good one. <laughs> not the good one. Yeah. This is the first time I've seen this. Room with Brie Larson. This is uh, the second time. Joseph? Jacob? Jacob Tremblay. Tremblay. Uh, I was shocked at how much I hated and loved this movie. I remember liking it more the first time. Okay. And the second time around, not so much. I don't know why. Really? Just, yeah. Just, do you think it was bad or did you think it was contrived? Did you think it was over? I don't think it's bad. Handed? I think, uh, to be honest, I think it was the kid just really bothered me with how disrespectful he was. <laughs> <laughs> I, disrespectful little kids. I thought I was, I thought it was, was so well done. It was, it was well done. I don't get me wrong. It's a good movie. It's a good story. Um, like I don't know. There's just I, something about it that bothered me the second time around. So even let's let's say that, like I don't know how honest <laughs> you were being about him being disrespectful and that being the issue. But if let's say that is true, I think that him being so disrespectful makes a lot of sense. Because oh no, it definitely makes sense. That doesn't mean I have to like it. No, no, I agree. But her no. her intention was to give him a good life in this room, yeah. right? And so this kid would be as spoiled as possible. In yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Obviously, he doesn't have anything. He doesn't leave the room at all. But he doesn't think anything exists outside of that room. And yeah. so anything that she any well, anything that she has that he wants, she is probably giving it to him to make him happy. Yeah. Pretty much. And so him Except being then, spoiled, What was it that he wanted sense, instead? She got jeans, uh candles on his birthday cake. <laughs> That's right. So Yeah, uh it l- makes sense. I'll I, I'll break down the the premise real quick. She was Break it down. <laughs> she was 17 and a guy came up to her and said, Hey, my dog is missing. Can you help me find it? She got in his car. He kidnapped her. And for seven years, he held her hostage in a little shack. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole time he was raping her and keeping her hostage. She ends up getting pregnant two years in. Has Mm -hmm. a kid five years after that, so seven years into her time there. Do you think she had to give birth by herself, or do you think he helped at all? 
I would guess by herself. That's wacky. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know a few people who have done it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just, oh, no, it's crazy. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, I know we had a friend who she just walked out into the woods and gave birth to her baby and came back. Really? <laughs> yeah. But I'm back, guys. Here's the baby. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Um, huh. Was that her plan? I think she, so her husband left her. And they, uh huh. This is getting kind of <laughs> sad, <laughs> but <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, her husband this left her because the the she was kind of a crazy person. Uh huh. Um, and so I think she was not ostracized from her community, but not supported uh-huh. by her community. Yeah. So her village was very, she was allowed to be a part of her village, but she was not vital. You know she I mean? was like uh, the scarlet letter. Almost. Like whatever the step before that is. The bronze letter. Yep. But anyways, uh, so Brie Larson was kidnapped at 17, 19 she got pregnant, at 24 her kid is 5, and yes. she figures out a way for them to escape, which involves him pretending to be dead. And getting the kidnapper to go and try and bury him. Jacob Tremblay escapes, runs into someone, gets saved, and now they're readjusting to being in life outside of room. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird to me. Like, uh, you, you watch this, right? And they, they finally make their big escape. Uh-huh. That's only halfway through the movie. Yeah. That's the first hour. And then there's another hour left. Yep. Um, can you, <laughs> one thought that I had watching this, can you, okay, so, so the captor, uh, what did they call him? Uh, old, old Nick. Old Nick. Like my brother. That's what I yes. kept thinking. Now, obviously, this is not a good person, right? But it, obviously, it, shown, kidnapper, he raper. He is shown to have some. Nope. Nope. Feelings, Wherever you're going, no feelings is with. Nope. No, just listen, listen, listen. Right. All right, I'll listen. Where, like he, but I disagree. He's. I, I just want to put it out there. I disagree. I, I, Everything Taylor's about to say, I 100 percent disagree. Go he ahead. is a tiny bit sympathetic towards her no. and the kid. No. Just, just listen. So much so <laughs> that when he believes that he's dead, he is willing to somewhat uh, follow her wishes as far as what to do with the body. Is what I'm getting at. Can you imagine is what I'm now getting at is if he wasn't like that and he's like, oh yeah, uh, by trees, sure, this and that. And he just like took it somewhere and burned it. Yeah. That, I mean, just like, I feel like that is more likely to happen in real life than what did happen. Um, like he's like, oh yeah, for sure. And then he just like digs a hole in his backyard and buries him. I would think if you are willing to kidnap a child, 17 being a child, mm-hmm. and rape them while you're holding them hostage, you are extremely weak-minded that you can be influenced by aggression fairly yeah. easily. So with her, her, like, forcefulness, like, because she said, don't look at the body don't, you know, cause, which was actually consistent, which they set up yeah. before. She's yeah. like, don't touch him. Don't talk to him. Don't look at him. Like, don't look at him. Don't, yeah. don't do anything with him. And so when he died, which was his fault. So I think he felt guilty. Yeah. And so she said, don't even look at the body. Promise me you're not going to look at the body. He's like, okay, I won't, I, I, I won't look. And so him not looking and him willing to go and try to bury the body. Makes sense. Also, burning the body, I don't think is really an option. Um, I don't think you could burn a body and the bones effectively without like a, an intentional, like a furnace made to do that. Incinerator? Yeah. I think it has to be. Yeah. No, maybe not. I, my point was, what if he had just decided to, to do anything else with it? Oh, yeah. Like, no. Bury I'm... it would be easy. Super easy to just bury it. Yeah. Don't even take it out of the carpet. Now, I don't mean to make this so personal, 
but I'm going to because this is what I thought the entire time. Harper, my second child, is four years old. Mm -hmm. Jacob Tremblay was five years old. Your oldest, I believe, is six? Yes. Would you trust your oldest to save your life with this Um, plan? Because I would definitely not trust it's Harper. It's hard. I think it's possible. You do, you think so? You think you could convince them to be quiet, get thrown in the back of a truck, and jump out and run to someone? I don't know. It's tough, right? Like it, it's real tough. Like, and I, I mean, again, this is not a, a a hit against it. It's not like, oh, I think it's so un- unrealistic. Because it adds so much to the stress and the tension of Brie yeah. Larson of like, this is our only option. You have to do this and you have to do this exactly right. And he struggled with it throughout, which feels very accurate to what it would be like in reality. Yeah. No, it, I, it, yeah, I agree. But when I look at my kids, I'm like, man. You would fail me so bad. <laughs> you would, you would get us all killed. You would not be able to complete this. You, as soon as they would pick you up in the carpet, you would start you laughing. Laugh, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you would be so, cause that, that nervousness with mm-hmm. little kids turns into giggles. Like, yep. anytime my kids try to hide to like scare or even if they're trying to hide cause they did something bad. It turns into giggles. It turns into laughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Yeah, it probably wouldn't work. But I, I'm curious. I, I would love to know if you're listening to this or watching the YouTube video, whatever. If you don't have kids and you've seen this movie, how much you relate to this? Because for me, with my kids being around this age, it was so compelling it it, i connected with it so much and i i felt like it was so well done so realistic and so understandable the choices she made and their struggles felt so like just relatable and i don't know if that's because i have a kid that age or if it's just relatable in general like it's just well done yeah i'm not sure it, hmm. I think it, it's probably just well done. Yeah. I mean, it, it th- nothing felt, uh, overly contrived. Nothing felt or unrealistic, unrealistic or forced. It felt like, yeah. oh yeah, no, this makes sense. I get why this would happen. One, so I watched the trailer, which I don't recommend if you haven't seen this movie. Don't watch the trailer. Although you shouldn't no. listen to this podcast either, but. Yeah, too late. <laughs> um, it gives away too much in the trailer. But I, oh really? Yeah, I thought the conflict was going to be the government trying to take her son from her, uh, okay. based on what the trailers played it out to be. But that yeah. didn't happen, and I felt like all the conflicts made so much sense between like her and her mom, where. Yeah. Brie Larson is like, you know, this is, you know, I was kidnapped for seven years. And the mom's like, do you think you were the only one whose life was ruined? Mm -hmm. And as a parent, to imagine your child being taken away from you for so long, that's the worst thing you can imagine. Like I would, and between at at some point in there, maybe you never say it out loud, but in in your head, you have to just imagine that they're dead. Like they're never coming back. Oh yeah, for sure. Whether you say that outwardly or not, you know that that's more than likely the outcome. Between being kidnapped myself or my kids being kidnapped, I a hundred percent would rather myself be kidnapped. Oh well, yeah, for sure. And obviously, it's hard to say like. Oh, the, the parents had a harder time than the person who was actually kidnapped, but. It's not harder, it's just different. It's It's different. different, But, yeah. When it's, when it's my own choice, 
I would say I would much rather do it. Like that would, it would be easier for me to be kidnapped, to be raped, whatever, than to imagine my kids going through that. Yeah. And so the mom I thought was phenomenal. I, I, she was, uh, what's her name? I don't know the actress. Joan Allen? Is that who it is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought she did great. And, uh, the dad, William H. Macy, mm-hmm. uh, so he, he's only in it for a very short amount of time. After they right, get because saved. Because they have since, they're separated. Yeah. The, the parents, which, which is, that's, so that's another terrible thing is like you, you, you hear about stuff like this a lot, right? Where, uh, parents will, will lose a child or, you know, something like that'll happen. Mm-hmm. And like, they just can't recover from it. Yeah. And so they've already gone through one tragedy and then they're not even together anymore because of it. Like, yeah. I, I'm not saying it happens to everyone, you know, maybe for, for some people it, it brings them closer, but a lot of times it just drives, because then there's there's blaming like whose fault is it really like yeah. we you know you should have been a better parent I could have been a better parent well there's so, there's projection too right like yeah. you would feel guilty yourself but oh of course you don't want to take it you don't want to uh, carry that yourself and so you want to put it on someone else like I feel bad I feel this bad it it has to be someone else's fault. Clearly, it's my spouse. They also failed. So where I failed and my guilt that I'm carrying must be their fault as well. And so for them to separate makes complete sense. Well, plus, who knows what it's going to do to you as a person. Like, you could become an alcoholic or start abusing drugs or just a mean, bitter person in general. Like, someone that your spouse doesn't want to be around anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's terrible. Although saying all that, Leo is like one of my favorite characters in this movie. Oh, he was, he was probably my favorite. Yeah, yeah for sure. He was a great guy. Which is the uh, do stepdad you, do you know of who, Brie Larson. Yeah. Do you know who Peter Gallagher is? Uh, no. The actor? He, uh, let me think of something that he's in. I can only picture him from Mr. Deeds. Okay. You've seen Mr. Deeds, right? Yeah. He's like the main the butler? I don't know if no. he's really the bad. No, not the butler. He's like the, the guy who's in charge of the estate. He's got the black hair. Uh huh. I, I want to say he was in Orange County or not Orange County. What was that other show? I feel like your family watched it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. The OC, the OC. Okay. It is Orange. I don't know why I called it Orange County, but the dad from the OC. Is that who you're talking about? I don't, I didn't, I never watched it. I don't know if he's the dad. He's got like wavy black hair. Mm-hmm. I thought this was him. For like almost the whole movie. <laughs> this is Tom McCamus. Yeah, I didn't realize that till the end. I he made like a face. I was like, wait a second, I don't think that's him. <laughs> but either way, yeah, no, he was great. He because he he was able to be a, a different kind of uh viewpoint, right? Because he, mm-hmm. he didn't have any actual investment in like he didn't know, you know, he didn't know the girl. He didn't have, or, he didn't have the same loss, I think is what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for him, it was all, it was all good. Yeah. Right. Cause he got, it was, it was all positive. Yeah. I mean, so, he, I'm yeah, sure. He, and he did well. Like uh, not to uh, contradict what you're saying. I'm sure he carried a lot of his wife, his Joan Allen, who's his wife now. A lot right. of her but, struggle, but because of her, not not it's not his. It's own not a personal loss. loss. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah I, exactly. Yeah, so he was able to connect with Jack and be friends with him and like help pull him out of yeah. his shell that he got because he was in. I don't know what to call it. I want to say the room, but that doesn't. Yeah. They they just call he it, calls it room. the room. No, they call the it room, room yeah. without the. Yeah. Um. Just like, I don't know, like you would say Magic Mountain or Sea World or something like that. It's just room. I want to go back to room. And it feels yeah. so unnatural, but it makes sense at the same time. Well, it's, I guess it's the same way you would describe your home, right? You don't say, I want to go to the home. Yeah. No, I, I agree. You say home. Yeah. It just, it sounds so bad. Like when you hear it. It sounds weird. But it, it fits. Like it's not. 
they wrote the script around not being able to say the room <laughs> because Tommy Wiseau had trademarked yeah. it. Yeah. Way to go, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> they had to do a lot of reshoots. Um, but anyway, so my point about William H. Macy was he was in it for a very short amount of time and he refused to acknowledge Jack, which is the son, Jacob Tremblay. Yes. And I, I totally, I totally get it. Now, even how terrible it is. Like this is the I, son of not only your daughter's kidnapper, but your daughter's rapist. And so it's like, okay, so you're part and, of my and, family, but you're also part of the family who ruined my life. Yeah. The, yeah, I could see it. it. The one thing I didn't like is when Brie Larson was like, just look at him. Look at him. And he's like, I can't look at him. I can't look at him. That felt way too long. And yeah, it was, he should have, it was awkward. He should have been able to look and then at least had a moment of like, I'm, I I have to go. I can't do this. You know what I mean? Like looking at the kid shouldn't have been the worst thing he could imagine, but no. And I feel like that, that whole look at him thing was, was almost tied back to the other guy. She demanding that he not look at him. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know <laughs> what the bigger picture is, but <laughs> something along those lines. I'm on to something here. But, uh, yeah, this, but, but yeah. this movie was so, so well done throughout. Yeah, I know it's, it's a, it's a good movie. There's really not much that I disliked. Like I hated everything about it because it made me, I legit started crying about halfway through. I got a very uh-huh. emotional. Watching this movie, not not gonna lie, I started crying. So there's a lot of Go stuff on. that made me uncomfortable throughout this movie. Uh, yeah. But uh I think it was when I think I started crying when uh William H. Macy busted into the hospital room and it was like the mom was like, I couldn't Oh yeah. I, no, that was that was an emotional emotional scene. He he was so good. He's such a good actor. And that moment that was, great. was so powerful of like I, my daughter who's been gone, I'm, I'm about to start crying right now. My daughter who's been gone <laughs> for seven years is back, is safe, is alive. And I wasn't around when she was found. Like yeah. all, just everything involved with that was so powerful. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it sucks because I, I could get why he wouldn't be though. Like, yeah, if you, if that, ends up, you know, ruining your marriage. Like you just want to be in a completely new place somewhere where you're not, you don't know anybody. It, nothing is familiar and you're just completely, you you have to start all over. Yeah. And so, and I guess it, it goes to tell you that at that point he had already given up, right? He, he thought there was no chance that she ever comes back. Yeah, I'm sure. If there was, if there was a chance that he thought she was still out there, would you leave? Even if you're separated? I don't think so. That was your child. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, they said he was on a business trip, but I, I'm I think pretty that's sure. Just what they, yeah. I, I, I think that was just a story. Yeah. They didn't want to come out and immediately say, Oh, yeah, we got divorced. Yeah. Your kidnapping broke our marriage up. You, you ruined us. So she, Brie Larson, Brie Larson is what, like, <laughs> was phenomenal in this movie. She was doing, all like she was so well suited for every situation that happened so she could take care of her son until the interview. Like she was so well composed because her focus was, I have to take care of my son. I have to keep him safe. I have to keep him sane. I have to, you know, love him and make him feel important, safe and that he's normal. As soon yeah. as she was questioned, the that that interview, I thought was uh, a bit extreme. I maybe yeah, that was crazy. Maybe that's accurate. I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't. It felt like it crossed a lot of lines. But yeah. I know news people don't care about lines, so. No, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, it felt like maybe it's accurate, but it also felt like not really 
very accurate. Like her intense questioning of this mom who didn't give up her son. Like, I don't know. Like, like, like she was being selfish. Yeah. Why didn't you tell him to go drop your son off at the hospital? One, because uh, I don't know if he one, would do how that. How do I know he's going to go drop him off on the side of the road? Yeah. And two, he's the only good thing in my life, which I've already established. Yeah. My life was hell before this. Yeah. And when my son a, came. That was a pretty ridiculous question. When my son came, I had light again. I had yeah. something to do. I had something to focus on. I had someone to care for and to protect and a reason to live. So she really, the interviewer really hammers home. You failed your son because you took care of him. <laughs> and, uh, she tries to commit suicide on her, I assume, uh, pain pills. Yeah. And has to go away for a little while and get counseling and stuff. And so now it's, uh, Jacob Tremblay is staying with his grandparents. And I, I, uh, I really thought that their relationship was so well done of, there's just so much, I I just feel like I keep saying well done. There's so many layers to his performance and to his character, Jacob Tremblay's, Mm -hmm. of being innocent, being a kid, not understanding what fully happened, but also being broken and being unaware of what's going on now. And having a difficult time fitting in. And the relationship between Leo and, uh, I think her name was Nancy. Is that right? I don't, I don't know. Nancy, yeah. The grandmother and the step grandfather. Yeah. Of them just like being patient and waiting and like slowly drawing them out. And I just, oh, it's so hard because it made me feel so bad when I watched the entire thing. I didn't have fun at all, <laughs> but this movie no, is it's not so movie. good. <laughs> it's I don't know what to say about it. It is definitely not a fun movie. So this is the second time you've seen it, right? Or the, have you seen it more than that? Yes. What was Two it? Times. What was it like watching it the second time? Did it mean more? It or was less? almost more. <sighs> depressing right because when you're watching it the first time you don't know i guess uh, assuming you haven't also seen the trailer you don't know if they're getting out the trailer what what, you know the trailer gave away almost the entire movie which is that's crazy to me like they show the the whole trailer let me break down the trailer quick sorry she is talking to him about room then she is explaining how he's going to escape from the truck they show him getting saved, her getting saved by the police, and then showing some of the conflict between her and her mom when they're yelling at each other. Really? That's so that, much that of the movie. The thing. Yeah. I was like, I was <laughs> shocked. I didn't know if they ever got out. I mean, I, you know, assume. I, but I, I, so I had heard about this movie and what it was about, and I thought the entire movie was about them in room. Or in the room or whatever you want to call it. That's what I thought too. And it felt like they were in there forever that at the end when they were finally rescued, like it felt like that could be the end of the movie. Yeah. And then it's only an hour. To me, having to just watch the trailer beforehand, because so generally what happens is Taylor and I, you and I, will choose a movie to watch and then mm-hmm. I will show my wives. My wives? Ooh. How many? <laughs> I will show my wife the trailers to the movies we chose. Soon to be just just single. <laughs> soon to be zero. If she ever hears this. They if they both hear it. <laughs> um, I'll show my wife Sam, my only wife Samantha, uh, the trailers to the movies I need to watch and see if she wants to watch them as well. So I watched Room with her and she said, "Nope, I I have no desire to watch that." Uh, oh really? Yeah. Well, I mean. It seemed very, very sad. And, uh. Yeah, well, for sure. It definitely was. And I, 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 again, I, I don't know who this movie was made for. Cause it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. Uh, it makes yeah, you sad the entire yeah. time. And, uh, it, it makes you cry. I don't know. I mean, it made me cry. 
Did it make you cry? Did you cry watching this movie at any point? I don't recall if I did the first time. I don't think so. Did you cry but the if second I time? Did, the second time, the whole movie. <laughs> the whole movie. Um, but it's definitely emotional for sure, especially the scene that you were talking about when they, you know, when William H. Macy first shows up. Cause that's, it's, it's relatable. Yeah. And so, like, she saw it and she's like, ah, I'm not in for this. And so, when I saw it, I was like, oh, they're clearly getting out. So, watching the movie, I felt like they were in a room for a very long time. Yeah. Based on the trailer, because like, oh, they, well, they get out. So this, this must be, I expected them in the room to be 20 minutes of, you know. Yeah, base, if that's what the trailer looks like, it, it would look like being in the room is not the focal point at all. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's living life after that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought I was getting uh, into, but it was half and half, which was good. Yeah. It was well done, but. Again, trailers are pretty terrible about. Uh, yeah, this is, and this is why I I do not like watching trailers. Yeah, it's a it's a good I, strategy. I really don't, especially when it's like if it's for a, a movie that's not coming out for a long time or something like that, I'll watch it. But like coming, you know, when they start releasing trailers like a week before the movie's out this night, I won't watch yeah. it. Like I haven't I know there's a new Avengers trailer out there. I haven't seen it. I've not seen the Deadpool trailer yet. I don't even want to. I just want to go watch it. Speaking of which, you've definitely seen Infinity War by now. You haven't seen Avengers four trailer just to continuity wise. Explain yourself. So people listening to this, oh, hearing you say right. you've seen the new Avengers oh, trailer. They're going to turn the podcast. They're, wait, hold on. This timeline does not make sense. <laughs> I don't believe any of this. Well, this is coming out like two months from now. And so. Well, hopefully I've seen it by then. Yes. <laughs> well, I just mean you saying the new Avengers trailer sounds like Avengers 4, not Avengers 3. Oh, yes. Also, haven't seen that one either. Yeah. That, well, that's all, <laughs> that's all I was saying. <laughs> but yeah, I especially the closer I get to a new movie coming out, I don't want to see anything on it. Yeah. I don't want any expectations. I don't, I don't want to be able to kind of piece together what I think is going to happen based on the trailer. Yeah. It ruins it. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I will say the movie that I, to this day, I literally knew nothing about. I had never heard of it, never seen a trailer for it. Nothing whatsoever. By the time I went to go see it in theater was Napoleon dynamite. And that's why it is the best movie of all time. <laughs> that's the same. I, I I didn't know. I saw I it. I literally had only heard about it the day of. People at school were talking about it. They're like, oh, did you see Napoleon Dynamite? I was like, no, I, I don't know what that is. And then by the end of that day, um, my mom was like, hey, I, I, I don't remember. My mom had someone that wanted to go see it. And they're like, do you want to go see Napoleon Dynamite? I was like, I, I, I don't know. I guess. I I was like, I'll just go to the movies. I have no idea what this is. I'd literally never heard of it until earlier that day. And then it was an amazing movie. Now, I could be wrong about this. You are. <laughs> but I believe Napoleon Dynamite had over a year long release in theaters. That Like it was in theaters for a year? That well, sort of. That it hit kind of a few markets. So it was an indie film, right? Like it wasn't like a a main, like a studio film. Right. So it hit a few markets and then it would move and go hit another few markets and then it would go and hit another few markets. So I was living in Ventura at the time. Yeah. And then about a year later, I was living in Bakersfield and it came out in theaters again. Oh, really? I, I, I could be wrong about the time. To me, in my head, a year, there was a year in between when I saw it in theaters. Me and my sister went and saw it, and it was great. We loved it. We had no idea what we were going to see. Don't even know right. why we watched it. I don't, yeah, it, exactly. Um, but then I saw it come out again in theaters about a year later, and I was kind of surprised. Huh. That's, uh, I didn't know. See, I, I, I didn't know they did anything like that. I I literally still don't really know anything about that movie. <laughs> it was uh it's an interesting one. I feel like But anyways, it's uh 
not nearly as good. I, I haven't seen it for a long time, but I feel like if I did... Yeah, it, it's probably not as good as I remember it. I don't think it holds up. Either way, I don't know. That's why I don't watch trailers, for the most part. Unless it's like a teaser for something that's not coming out for like a while, yeah. I'll watch it, whatever. But I just... I, trailers are many movies at this point, and it's upsetting. Yeah. No, they're really bad about giving away big plot points. Like, I... Is uh, it like, do you think you need to, or people aren't going to be, like, interested? I don't I don't get it. Uh, I think it's about getting people who are not going to be interested in I like if you make a good movie people are going to go see it yeah but it's going to take a lot longer okay well let it like studios are willing to make a a worse movie to get a bigger audience right and so to give away important story beats in a trailer and them still come and pay to see the movie then they won especially if more people come to see the movie because a big moment is in the trailer then they double win because yeah you know what i mean like it, it makes sense but it's tough like uh it's dumb. i sent you the trailer to upgrade i think last yeah. week and uh, I'm fairly confident that the guy who put shotgun shells in his arm is going to be a big villain or a big uh, uh, enemy for the main guy. Mm-hmm. And they show him killing him in the trailer. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, unless there's like uh, a a jam or something like that, but like that's see, that's what I'm talking about. I uh, Drives me nuts. Yeah. Well, that's part of my issue with uh, Infinity War. I mean, you've seen um, Infinity War by now, right? We can we can freely talk about it. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I'm still pretty emotional about oh, it. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to talk about it. I'll hold off then. I need some time. <laughs> Back to room. Yeah, so I, I never saw the trailer for this. I definitely would have changed uh, what I thought about it was going into it. But I just assumed that the whole thing pretty much takes place in that room. Can you imagine, though? Okay, here's, so here's the other thing. We're talking about if we trust our kids to save us. Yeah. Let's say let's say that the our, our kid or the, the kid in the movie yeah. does everything perfectly, right? He, he, he wiggles out. He waits for a stop. He gets out, and he gets help. Yeah. What are the chances that he's also going to re- like give you enough information to like even find you? Yeah. Like if it were my kids, even if they got rescued, I would still be there forever. <laughs> well, that was like, there was no way because my son cannot remember what he just did at school like five minutes <laughs> earlier. Like how was school? It was good. What'd you learn about? I don't know. <laughs> I, well, I guess you didn't really learn it then. I I definitely feel like the guy would have gone back and killed her. Oh, for sure. Like I, I didn't. Or do you, either that, or he just never even went back. He just bailed. Well, I think that's what happened. I think that's what happened in um, the story. Um, he just never went yeah. back. But I feel like because he, so Jacob Tremblay jumps out of the back of the truck and runs to a guy and is trying to give him a note. And the guy's like, "Oh, is that for me?" And uh, old Nick grabs the note and puts it in his pocket. And he's like, "Don't worry about it. We're fine. Don't worry about it." And Jacob Tremblay's like, help, 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 like real quiet. And the guy's like, hey, I'm going to call the cops. Like, this doesn't seem okay. And yeah. old Nick just drops Jacob Tremblay and runs to his car and takes off. Uh, yeah. So the assumption is he never goes back home. He's just mm-hmm. on the run from that point. He gives up. He knows people, knows his card. They know his plates. Takes off. Uh, to me... If you're that desperate, you go and get revenge for the person who caused that desperation. You think so? I, I don't know. Like, I don't, I feel like I would do the same. Like, I would like it's too. Who knows when they can? I, they might find the place before I get there. I don't know. I'm, I'm not ever going back. If you 
if you think there's any chance at you possibly getting away with this, you can't ever go back. Yeah, maybe. Like, I guess that, that makes I mean, sense. If I if I were like, look, I already know that I'm caught and like this is it for me, maybe I go get revenge. I don't know. But if I think that there's any chance that I can get away with this, I'm not going back. I just logically, I mean, I guess this guy's not very logical, right? Like he's not making, he's not doing things that make a lot of sense. No. But what's your plan, right? Like, I mean, he clearly, uh, they show a, a clip of him getting caught, or at least you assume he gets arrested. They don't show. They arrest somebody. Yeah, they arrest someone. They don't show him. They don't show his car or anything, but they arrest somebody. And, uh, the presumption is it was definitely him. Right? Like, I think that's fair. Right. That, that's what yeah. the movie was saying. Yep. Um, but what's your plan? You're in the same car. You have all the same credit cards. You probably don't have a lot of cash on you. What are you going to do? No, there's no plan. The pl- In that situation, it's like, okay, escape and then, you know, Figure it wing out. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pointless to try and think of what you're going to do before you actually even get away. You got to get away first. That's the most important yeah. thing. And then you just got to figure it out from there. Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, that's what he does. And again, like, I think that's another, a, another credit towards the movie being yeah. so well, welly written that. Welly written. Welly written. That everything. Welly? Written? Everything. I still don't think that's right. <laughs> well, no, that's why I repeated it, because I knew it was wrong. Uh, One more time. Welly written. Uh, Got it. That. Like a, like a Karis will. Everything seems to make sense. Yeah. Like in a, in a depressing, shocking, upsetting way, it all feels legitimate. So, yeah. So what, what I was getting at was, can you imagine, right? So he, he, he ditches the kid and he just never goes back. But what if they can't ever find the mom? Like, can you imagine? That's, she just if that was the last, death. that was the last that we saw of her was when the dude takes him out of the room. Well, honestly, that's probably what would have happened. If he never went back, I don't feel like it's that far fetched. Yeah. If he never went back, she would yeah. be stuck in the room until she starved to death. And Jacob yeah. Tremblay would be just in foster care. You don't think he'd go with the grandparents? I don't think they would have found the grandparents. Oh, that's true. The See, and I kind of thought that it might go that way. And the only way that they would be able to identify him was from that tooth. The tooth, yeah. Which was... Be able to figure out that that was the mom... Which, again, was another thing that felt so strange, but uh-huh. understandable. Like, one, imagine yourself putting your mom's tooth in your mouth to hold a safekeeping. It's disgusting, right? No. Yeah, it's it's weird, for sure. But now imagine your mom is all you've ever had, all you've ever known, and the only thing you have... To remember her by is that tooth. It makes mm-hmm. so much sense, especially if you're five years oh, no. old. It, yeah, it definitely made sense. And so, like, it's just so impressive as a, a for a story to be able to do something that is so gross and so unnatural, and yet make complete sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 good for sure. Um. That would that would have been that would have been crazy. She just gets that's like that's it. You never see her. Again. <laughs> it would have been and extra you just, upsetting. But then I think at, at, I mean, how long for do you think it, if it's you, you're in there, right? And the dude just never comes back. How long do you do you wait before you think, okay, he's never coming back? Like she can take active measures to try to get out, you know, which she couldn't before because he was there to stop yeah. her. No, I feel like like breaking the the skylight or yeah, the skylight is I definitely know, probably number one. Right? Breaking down the Cause it's a, it's a shed, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, so when I first watched it before the end, so at the very end, they go back to the, the shed. So Jacob Tremblay can say goodbye and kind of close that chapter in his life. I thought they were like 
downstairs in a bunker. That's what I thought too. But until you see the shed, it's just freestanding. Yeah. And, uh, which is crazy to me. It had concrete walls, like really thick concrete walls and, uh, acoustic panels on the roof. Yeah. But a hundred percent, someone would have heard something. I, I, I want, yeah, I wondered the same thing. Like eventually, eventually, if, if there was no fear of that guy coming back and you can make as much noise well, and they show, they show a scene where, uh, Brie Larson and Jacob Tremblay are screaming as loud as they can. And Jacob Tremblay is like, yeah. I, why don't the aliens ever hear us? Cause he doesn't understand that there's other people outside. And Brie Larson's like, I don't know. So. The presumption is every day for seven years while during a certain time, while presumably the guy's at work, she is screaming her head off. Mm -hmm. And for seven years, nobody notices that that shed is not that soundproof. There's no way. No. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 crazy. <laughs> well, but yeah, again, yeah, small, small nitpicks, things like that. I think this movie is great. I don't recommend it. It's not a fun watch. It doesn't make you no, feel good really about not. anything. Uh, even the end, I didn't feel like what at the end of this movie. I was like. I should probably go hug my kids. That's all I felt. <laughs> like I didn't feel, yeah. I didn't feel better about anything. I didn't feel like encouraged. No. I just felt beat up. Yeah. And the fact that you know, hey, yeah, I'm glad you guys are out and everything. You guys are going to have a pretty terrible life forever. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're too psychologically messed up at that point. It's yeah, for sure. Like maybe, maybe there's a chance that the kid, comes out okay you know with lots of therapy no way maybe. like okay maybe he he knows way too much and by the time he is an adult and understands what being in the wardrobe that wardrobe time meant that he yeah. was sitting in a wardrobe while his mom was being raped right outside the door mm-hmm. no there's no there's no coming back from that you're uh, you're screwed up forever. You think so? I think so. I I think you're you're probably right. I'm just saying if anybody had a chance, he would be the one. Uh, the, well, the, the, his the Brie Larson though for sure never. No, yeah, Brie Larson is her character is is like definitely she will forever live at home for the rest of her life, never have a serious relationship, never be able to trust anybody. Yeah. Yeah, it's messy. <laughs> it's it's terrible. Yeah, and it's a very tragic story that was very sad to watch, but so well done. And uh, yep, it's one of those things that uh, you like. I complain about all the time that stories are not willing to make hard choices because it's easier to not do it. Yeah. This movie did not do that. And, uh, it's, I mean, this movie made all the choices, not that I would want it to make, but I would want it to make, to tell this story. And I was not happy watching this movie. (laughs) Like I, again, I appreciate it so much, but it's not fun. Like if every movie was this, I would never watch Mm -hmm. movies again. I would be done. After three movies yeah. like this in a row, I'd be like, you know what? I get it. I'm Life done. sucks. This is. It would be. It would. You flash forward to twenty years, and it would be like someone who lived, like who who was in prison for a long time, right? And then once they get out, they can never adjust, and they just want to go back. Yeah. We see her. She's back, living in the room. Her and the kid. They just live there. What by choice? What are you saying? In 20 years, that's what they do? Like, they eventually, they can't adjust to life outside of the room, and they go back to living in the room. 
they just move back to the shed exactly or just yeah. live a life like yeah, a, no, ex- you know, either way, one or the other. <laughs> Cause I kind of felt like that's what she was doing. Uh, after she got out, she was kind of like, she just wanted to stay in bed. She just wanted to stay in her own room. She didn't want to leave. Cause she, oh, I thought that was just the crippling depression. Well, I mean, that's all a part of it, but I thought that yeah. was like, she was so overwhelmed by being free and having choices that she just wanted to be isolated still. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I can see it. I think say she never had a kid. Mm-hmm. I think her story logically would be much more tragic. Oh yeah, and for sure. I get it. I'm not saying that having a, a child from rape is better in any sense. But Are you sure? <laughs> but Just make sure that's not what you're saying. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it is. I she her life in this story was definitely improved by having her son. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, that's true. So, I don't know. I This is uh, an outstanding movie. It was great. The story is so powerful. Don't watch it. You will just be sad. Yeah. <laughs> that's my... Unless, uh, unless you don't have kids, watch it and let us know how you feel. Yeah, if you don't have kids... I would, I'm, I'm very intrigued to know how this story lands. Cause again, Taylor and I, we both have kids within one year of the age of this child. Yeah. And it is very tough to imagine my, <laughs> my kid being in that position. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, well, that was room. Uh, I don't, Room. I don't know if there's anything else to say. It's much, there is nothing left, much less enjoyable than the room. I think. Oh yeah. If for you sure. have the choice between the two, I would definitely say, just go ahead with the room, but for sure. Uh, room is definitely better made. Uh, we will be back n- slightly next week with what do we decide on? <laughs> Logan lucky. Oh yeah. Logan lucky. Uh, Daniel Craig, uh, what's the guy, Kylo Ren, who plays Kylo Ren? Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Uh, I've never seen it. I think it'll be... I have not either. I think it'll be a good one. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I don't know anything about this movie. I'm gonna keep it that way. Uh, do you want me to tell you what I know about it? Absolutely not. (laughs) Um... Yeah, so I think that would be a fun one. It's supposed to be good. Uh, if you want to hear what our thoughts on that movie right now, you can go over to Patreon, and for a dollar, you get access to all our episodes two weeks in advance. But you also get to help decide who has to pay the punishment between Taylor and I. So you vote for Alan. Oh, and that's coming up. And uh, Taylor will end up having to pay the punishment. Or you vote for Taylor, and I Ooh. will have to pay the punishment. Uh, at, at the time of recording this, I have paid so many more punishments than Taylor. Yes, almost all of the punishments. Almost all of them. All but one. And it, all it doesn't one. feel very accurate to, uh, who's a better person. It's, you mean to how you who thought deserves, your life was? Who deserves to be punished? It doesn't feel very accurate. So if you'd like to help... I'd like to think now you're finally seeing things for what they are. <laughs> if you would like to help rectify this injustice, you can go and vote for Alan for a dollar. Don't do it, because I already know what your punishment's going to be, and I think it's going to be good. Well, you get that this is like two months since whatever you're thinking about right now, right? And at that point, I will already have a new one picked <laughs> out. But yeah, so patreon.com slash I seen that. You can follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod. Like us on Facebook and I've seen that. We'll be back with Logan Lucky as our next episode. Woohoo!